Hello, Dark Readers, and welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. I am your host, Katie, and with me is my crazy host, Carrie. Why are you already <laughs> laughing? I have I, my camera off, you guys. She can't see me. I know. <laughs> She I don't must know. sense that I look funny today. I got really excited about our nonfiction releases of this month in September 2023. Yes. There's quite a few of really cool ones this year, I think. And, and I like month. to mix I like to mix it up because I'm reading all this dark fiction or some indulgent, stupid romance fantasy books, whatever. But I don't want to get dumber, so I need to stay smart and keep up to... So I read nonfiction, like every third book has to be nonfiction so I can learn something and stimulate my brain. I think that's really smart. And there's just a couple of kooky ones that I'm seeing. Like, I have a Krampus one, and I'm I'm really pumped to talk about it. So <laughs> anyway, let's get started, why don't we? <laughs> well, as it so happens, I'm seeing an Agatha Christie movie tonight. Ooh. A Haunting in Venice. Of course, Kenneth Branagh is all over it. So our first book today is Agatha Christie, An Elusive Woman. Yes. It's by Lucy Worsley, who is like a history expert over in Britain. She has TV shows and written all these well-researched books. So I'm looking forward to it. And I'm not an Agatha Christie reader. Mysteries are just not my thing usually. Mm. But she's so important to all book readers that love mysteries. She's just iconic. Early on, she was writing back when women really didn't write mysteries. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So this is a new fascinating account of the life of Agatha Christie. Why did she spend her career pretending she was just, quote unquote, an ordinary housewife when clearly she wasn't? Her life is fascinating for its mysteries and passions. And Lucy Worsley says that she was thrillingly, scintillatingly modern. She went surfing in Hawaii back when most Americans barely knew Hawaii existed. Yeah. She loved fast cars, and she was very intrigued by the brand new science of psychology. And she had her own devastating mental illness issues. But oh. she presented herself as a retiring Edwardian lady of leisure. She was born in 1890. Wow. So Lucy Worsley got access to personal letters and papers that have rarely been seen in order to write this biography. I'm very, very intrigued. Uh, the publisher is Pegasus Crime. It originally came out September 2022, but when I was doing the research, I screwed up and didn't know that, so I don't mind that we talked about this old book from a year ago anyway. <laughs> it might <laughs> have just okay. come out in paperback is why it hit our list. Yes, yeah. it's coming out in paperback on October 10th. Cool. So that's Agatha Christie, an elusive woman paperback by Lucy Worsley. It fits because the Agatha Christie movie is coming out or a Agatha. It's fine. It works. Yes. My first book of today is actually being pushed to October. So we're just we're off to a great start <laughs> today. <laughs> so this is the art of the zombie movie. This is by Lisa Morton. I am. I didn't realize how obsessed I was with zombies until actually kind of recently. I like a lot of things I love are zombie things, but I never draw them. I don't really write about zombies. It's just like one of those things I keep to myself. Was it possibly The Last of Us? Although those were fungus creatures, not necessarily zombies. Did that kind of inspire you lately? Because uh, that show was so good. Holy crap. Yeah, that one was a big one, which is crazy because we haven't finished the video game. And then uh, there's a bunch of anime that I love. Obviously, The Walking Dead is another one because we did yeah. big binge sections. So we, oh, you know, yeah. and I got the Walking Dead comic. So I don't know. This book is specifically about zombie movies. So like 28 Days Later is one of my favorite zombie movies. And Dude. They talk about that. There's 500 posters in here, lobby cards, press books, uh, stills, and there's props that are featured in this particular book that are from zombie movies across the whole cinema of history. There, this is an eye-popping, entertaining visual history of zombie films. Wow. And it's written by Lisa Morton. There is a story of the origin and global reach of the zombie feature film special features, quotes, and interviews from key creators, 
there's oh wow a survey of such varied subgenres like black exploitation, sci-fi, cowboy, and comic zombie films. Wow, I might have to get this, but this is only 224 pages. I was expecting like a whole bunch of pages, but it'll probably be really really cool. It does talk about zombie movies movies from other countries, even like Germany, Japan, Mexico. So very, very cool stuff. Uh, This is $45, though, right now on Amazon. This might make a really cool coffee table read, a gift for Christmas time. This is The Art of the Zombie Movie by Lisa Morton. My next book is not dark, but I think you'll excuse me because I know a lot of you listeners also love witchy books. And it's called Enchanted Foraging, Wild Crafting for Herbal Remedies, Rituals, and a Magical Life. It's by Ebony George, but she spells it G-H-E-O-R-G-H-E, so I might have just mispronounced that. This book comes out September 5, and I'm very excited because I live next to the woods where I can forage for wild herbs and particularly fiddlehead ferns, but those are for food, not magic. Cool. So in this book that's divided into chapters by season, we're going to find tips for foraging correctly mindfully and sustainably that means don't take the whole plant and don't hog it all for ourselves i know instructions for making teas balms decoctions and other herbal remedies made out of foraged ingredients and materials and wild crafts for rituals that are going to usher in the new season inspired by mystical folk practices around the world and more Hmm. so it's meant for novice foragers And there's also some sidebars on how different cultures have connected with the greatest mystic of all, Mother Earth. So I'm looking forward to checking this out. It's Enchanted Foraging by Ebony George. I like that. I think I'll probably pick that one up too. Now I'm butting in with a second book because I'm rude to Katie or because (laughs) we, we accidentally found another book and shoved it in at the last second. This one actually comes out in 2023. It's Foreign Bodies. Pandemics, Vaccines, and the Health of Nations by Simon Shama. It's a vibrant cultural history investigating pandemics and vaccines. It's not politically based at all. They're not trying to blah, blah, blah. They're just talking about what happened. So he has page-turning stories set in the 18th and 19th centuries where smallpox strikes London, cholera hits Paris, plague comes to India, They're visiting hospitals and prisons, palaces and slums alike, where everyone's suffering. And we love books about suffering. So there's uh, an unforgettable cast of characters. Even though this is nonfiction, we're going to learn about a philosopher playwright that was burning up with smallpox in a country chateau, a vaccinating doctor paying house calls in Halifax, a woman doctor in South India driving her inoculator carriage through the stricken streets as dead monkeys drop from the trees. But we're also going to visit the labs when great life-saving breakthroughs happen in Paris, Hong Kong, and Mumbai. The book is going to focus on an unsung hero called Valdemar Hafkin, a gun-toting Jewish student in Odessa turned microbiologist at the Pasteur Institute. He was hailed in England as the saver of mankind, for vaccinating millions against cholera and bubonic plague in British India. This is going to be a very interesting read. And like I said, it's not political. And it's called Foreign Bodies, Pandemics, Vaccines, and the Health of Nations by Simon Shama. My next book is the one that was making me giggle in the beginning. It is The Fright Before Christmas, Surviving Krampus, and Other Yuletide Monsters, Witches, and Ghosts. This comes out September 4th. This is by Jeff Ballinger and Terry Reed does the illustrations. And the illustration is hilarious. Krampus is like holding this this chunky child and he's crying. And Krampus is obviously like, yes, I've got the child. (laughs) And it's cracking As he does. (laughs) Yes, it's wonderful. So you can step into the dark roots of Christmas past where the Krampus punishes the bad boys and girls. As he should. Exactly. Christmas time is truly the darkest and creepiest time of the year, filled with devilish creatures lurking in the shadows, waiting to get us. Isn't that fun? How that's a lot of Christmas cheer. 
Ooh. Best known is the Krampus, who has been the subject of films and songs. There was a time in the late 1800s when people sent Krampus cards, not holiday greetings. What a time to be alive in the 1800s. Pandemics and Krampus. <laughs> There are other violent and dangerous monsters from all over northern climes, or climes, yes, who have been hunting naughty children for centuries. From shapeshifters to mountain trolls to elves to heavy-handed cohorts of St. Nicholas, the Christmas holiday has been filled with ghosts and monsters ready to dole out punishment to those who need it. There's a lot of cool stuff in here, different folk tales that are all Christmassy and from the past. Love it. This, it's really fun. If you, I'm actually thinking of getting Krampus pictures this year just because I didn't know that that was a thing until recently. So that might be something you'll get in the mail, <laughs> Carrie. <laughs> Yay! This is the Fright Before Christmas book, Surviving Krampus and Other Yuletide Monsters, Witches, and Ghosts by Jeff Ballinger. Before I step into my next book, I wanted to remind you that if you're curious about any of these books, we have show notes on our website with uh, Amazon affiliate links where you can take a look at the books and or shop for them as need be. And our website, of course, is darksideofthelibrary.com. So my next book is Ghosts, Monsters, and Demons of India. It's by Rakesh Khanna and J. Fursifer Bhairav. Comes out September 12. The publisher is Watkins Publishing. It's an illustrated guide to the folk tales and real life stories of the ghosts and monsters and demons of India, which I don't actually know very much about. No. We're going to see 60 spooky illustrations, including killer robots that were built with stolen Roman engineering technology that used to guard the relics of the Buddha. We're going to learn about the ghost of a 21-year-old motorcyclist whose Enfield bullet is venerated at a highway temple in Rajasthan. I'm assuming an Enfield bullet is a motorcycle? Hmm. A Himalayan drum-playing spirit teacher whose wife is a fearsome yeti. Ooh. Diabolical entities conjured into existence by the simultaneous deaths of seven tigers and something called triple rooted night flying vedic necromancers wow oh my god and perhaps part of this book will be hilarious because it's call center employees from beyond the grave <laughs> oh not gonna say this is gonna have a permanent place on my bookshelf but i'm curious it's ghosts monsters and demons of india by rakesh khanna my next book is really cute. It's not super dark, but it's called The Hedge Witch's Little Book of Lunar Magic. There is a whole series of Hedge Wit or The Hedge Witch's Little Library, and this is book four. Check out the other ones too. They're darling. Oh, I need to check it out then. So it says, as a central figure of the craft, the moon holds a special place in any hedge witch's practice. Through more than a hundred spells, recipes, and workings, this two-color hardcover book shows you how to honor Our Lady of the Night and utilize her power to amplify your magic and affirmations. You can discover lunar myths and legends as well as correspondences to herbs, crystals, and deities. You will also learn how to connect with changing energies in each season and moon phase with guidance for drawing down the moon, making moon water, creating a moon altar, and other sacred activities. This book features ample inspiration for honoring and harmonizing, oh my goodness, with this revered celestial body. This is the mm. Hedge Witch's Little Book of Lunar Magic. This is by Tudor Beth. And it's number four of the Hedge Witch's Little Library, which apparently I also need to check out the rest. What is next for you? Another witchy book. Woo. It's Urbana Witch, A Year in the Forest, working with herbs, barks, mushrooms, roots, and flowers. It came out September 11 by Cecilia Latari, and it's illustrated by Alice Guidi. It's another witchy herbal forest book for those of you that enjoy goth cottagecore. And Urbana is a witch of the forest who uses the wisdom and power of nature through a deep understanding of herbs, barks, mushrooms, roots, flowers, and woodlands, plants. 
And since I live next to the woods, I might have to grab this. It spans a full year beginning at the winter solstice and shares magical and healing practices, spirit animals. And I kind of wish our spirit animal of the neighborhood bear would go deeper into the woods and stop going through my neighbor's trash cans. But anyway, subtle energies change with the seasons. Each chapter begins with a suggestive description of the forest in a particular season. There's an introduction to what it means to be an Urbana witch, along with guides on how to follow the path of herbs and connect with the plants of the forest. And there's an almanac of information for each season on the animals, trees, and plants that you're going to see each season, depending, of course, on the part of the world you live in. And there's activity tips. Here comes the, God, uh, the hedge witch and the goth cottage core. How to make soup, lotions, incense, dried herbs, and more. This looks really interesting. The publisher is Red Wheel, and it's Urbana Witch, A Year in the Forest by Cecilia Latari. That sounds very cute. Yeah. My next book is Hideo Kojima's progressive game design from Metal Gear to Death Stranding. It is pretty great if you are into video games or video game design. Hideo Kojima is, I mean, he's incredibly influential. Uh, Most of his stuff is the Metal Gear Solid franchise, but there's some other games that he's done. Uh, The most Well, one of the more recent ones is Death Stranding. So some of these are scary. Some of them are not. But it is kind of scary because most of his games are surrounded by the idea that you don't necessarily confront enemies and kill them. You actually have to hide from them. Ah! So he's kind of a master of this stealth game franchise. And he has definitely built a bridge between games and other forms of media, which is amazing. So he's done like films and novels and he draws a lot of experiences from both of those things to create just this really awesome immersive experience for games specifically. So if you are looking for a video game design sort of book, Hideo Kojima is going to be really awesome and Definitely a must-have, especially if you are looking to create a really kind of a fun, spooky game that's not necessarily kill the monsters, but (laughs) let's hide from them and stealth around them. So this book is by Brian Hikari, uh, Carly Kowarik, and we also have an editor, Jennifer DeWinter. Awesome book. This comes out September 21st. My next book is called Horror Unmasked, A History of Tarot. Terror, excuse me, from Nosferatu to Nope. It's by Brad Weissman. They start at the silent film era and go all the way up to the blockbusters of today. It's supposed to be a fun-filled, highly illustrated dive into the past influences and present popularity. Horror has long been the most popular film genre, they say. Really cool. More horror movies have been made than any other kind. We need them. Yes. So this comprehensive guide features a thorough discussion on monster movies and b-movies like the thing it came from outer space and the blob the destruction of the american censorship system featuring blood feast night of the living dead and the texas chainsaw massacre which i still have not and probably can't see i don't like chainsaw movies (laughs) international horror zombies horror comedies and horror in the new millennium they're going to look at matongo suspiria and ghostbusters I should say Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. A dissection of the critical reception of modern horror. They're going to look at Pan's Labyrinth, Funny Games, and Neon Demon. And they're going to share stunning movie posters and film stills, as well as fan made tributes to some of the most lauded horror franchises in the world, such as Aliens. And I had a, a horrible nightmare last night that I could not wake up from <gasps> of the original alien drooling with their mouth open trying to get me in my bed Woo. what i did not sleep well but it was kind of I'm awesome i'm so sorry <laughs> they're gonna look at the evil dead the hills have eyes and scream so it's a reference and informational book for horror fans that are interested in cultural influence worldwide the publisher is a very respected becker and meyer books came out september 5 it's horror unmasked by brad weissman 
my next book is The League of Lady Poisoners. Yes! Illustrated uh, True Stories of Dangerous Women. Women. This comes out September 19th. This is by Lisa Perrin, Holly Frey, Maria Tremarchi. So, I I mean, obviously, this is... I have to get it. Yeah, this is going to be a really great one. (laughs) And it's the illustrations are really cute. There's some fun ones where there's like little quotes next to it. Our table of contents is like professional poisoners, escape and defiance, money and greed, power and politics, anger and revenge, and love and obsession are our chapters. (laughs) It's beautiful. So it says it's a riveting and well-researched volume by Lisa Perrin. She weaves together the stories of more than 25 accused women poisoners, exploring the circumstances and skill sets that led them to lives of crime. And those are the ones that were caught. (laughs) Uh, So you might find yourself rooting for some of them. I mean, probably 80%, I'm going to say. Probably. So like Sally Bassett is one who helped poison her granddaughters and slavers in Bermuda. There's also Julia Tofana, who sold her name brand concoction to women wanting to be rid of their abusive or otherwise undesirable husbands. (laughs) We also have other stories. Uh, One of somebody I've never heard of. Her name is Yia Murano of Argentina, a notorious swindler and serial killer. There's also the notorious Nurse Jane Topin, who is just horrible. So that's one of the 20% (laughs) ones you won't be rooting for. So... It's organized, as you saw, with, like, thematic chapters based on the women's motives. It also includes an illustrated primer that delves into the origins and effects of common poisons throughout history. Oh, that's so cool that they they did it like that. It's really fun if you are a true crime fan, if you like feminist history, or if you're just really curious about, you know, this more macabre side of human nature and poison, of course. As we are. Yes. So women can do anything, even commit murder. We're just like more clever, I guess, about it and not as ostentatious. (laughs) So this is called The League of Lady Poisoners. This is by Lisa Perrin, and I think we're both going to go grab this one. Heck yeah, because we can't share. We live too far (laughs) apart. It's a whole hour drive. I know. We need to decorate our shelves with it. My next book is Mystical Mushrooms. Discover the magic and folklore of fantastic fungi by Aurora Kane. I guess I'm really in the woods today. Yeah. It comes out September 12th, and it defines the beauty of mushrooms by focusing on their magical connections and symbolic meanings through folkloric tales and superstitions throughout the world. Go for a walk in the woods on any given summer day, and you might find yourself surrounded in fungi galore, as they lay nestled on the ferns and trees. After a rainstorm, peek out in your backyard, and you might see tiny spores sprouting from the grass, forming what is known as a fairy ring. Uh, As an aside, we just don't go pick mushrooms in the woods and eat them or handle them, by the way, people. That's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. So Mystical Mushrooms enters this realm of exploring the magical properties, mythological connections, and symbolic qualities of the fungi that so intrigue us. She's going to share magical history, spells, symbolism, and spirituality. They're stunningly depicted artwork, and we're going to learn about 35 species of mushrooms. And notice there are no recipes in this book because we are not eating mushrooms that we just see in the forest. Right. This is Mystical Mushrooms Discover the Magic and Folklore of Fantastic Fungi by Aurora Kane. My next book is The Modern Witchcraft Book of Crystal Magic. Your Complete Guide to the Power of Crystals. This comes out September 19th. This is by Judy Ann Nock. I am not a crystal person, I, which is weird because I do like the shiny, beautiful, crystal-y bits, but I'm not like a magic-y crystal person. That's just, you know, I like looking at them. They're cool. Yeah, me too, but I have friends that are super crystal people. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Me too. And I have friends who can just name them off, like, right off the bat, and I'm like, oh my god, how do you do this? <laughs> so this one explores 50 useful stones and gems. It's a uh, crystal magic, but it also talks about crystal focus spells. It's full color, which is cool. 
Let's see, what does it say? It has, in the intensity of the fiery cauldron of transformation, there's a series of reactions and bonds that occurred to culminate in the creation of this beautiful structure, carrying the energy of the earth. Ooh, that's really inspirational. Mm -hmm. Now, more than ever, modern witches have a vast number of powerful crystals from around the world right at their fingertips, harnessing their power in spell work and rituals. With this book, you can explore the power of crystals in spellcraft and beyond from history and tradition of crystal magic to how to work with crystals and how to curate your own collection to meet your magical needs. So there's an index, which is really nice, 450 crystals that you need to know, including spells, rituals, and you'll have everything you need to unlock the magic of the crystals and tap into timeless beauty, power, and wisdom of the Ooh, earth please. as you harness its magical powers. Yes. That would be really awesome. I have a ton of crystals that I don't, I just look at. They're cool. So I could use the Modern Witchcraft Book of Crystal Magic to learn more. This is by Judy Ann Nock and comes out September 19th. Next up, I have a cookbook for you. It's the Ooh. official Five Nights at Freddy's cookbook. It's by Scott Cawthorn and Rob Morris. It's meant for teens and young adults, but anybody can enjoy it. But it's set at the grade level 7 to 9. And it's the one and only official Five Nights at Freddy's cookbook. There's 40 recipes inspired by the hit games. For example, Freddy Fazbear's Pepperoni Express, Chica's Ultimate Thai Chicken Burger, Foxy's Fruity Cove Cooler, and El Chip's Fully Loaded Tortillas. Oh. I haven't seen inside of this, so that's all I have to say about it. I just wanted to let you know it's coming out, but it's been pushed to October 24, just in time for Halloween. Oh. It's the official Five Nights at Freddy's cookbook by Scott Cawthorn. My next book is Oh My Gourd. <laughs> How to Carve a Pumpkin plus 29 other Halloween activities. And this is by an author named Jack Hallow. And I just can't. <laughs> this comes out September 5th. Uh, as the sun sets on summer, there's no need to be sad because fall is here and it's time to carve some gourds. Yes, it is. But pumpkins aren't just for teenagers to smash on Halloween. There hey. are a multitude of uses for this versatile product. And oh my gourd is your go-to <laughs> gourd guide. <laughs> that is a tongue twister. You did a good job. Thank you. There's a how to carve step by step instruction manual, 20 pumpkin recipes. Oh, yay! There's nine other uses for pumpkins and gourds, and two pumpkin carving stencils. That's nice. You can get back to the basics with a handy step by step for carving a pumpkin that will have your callers commenting on your crafty cutting. Stop it, alliteration narrator people. <laughs> Use one of the included templates to carve your creation, then discover how to turn a simple gourd into a water bottle or a colorful animal feeder that will bring all sorts of critters to your garden. After, why not whip up a batch of smoky pumpkin deviled eggs? Oh, that's interesting. They have pumpkin chips. There's a warm, mm. warming pumpkin spice latte to sip on. Did recipe. you say warming? Warming. Like, I might oh, have said oh. warming. Oh, <laughs> It's like, nobody, oh. <laughs> you're like, uh, stop. <laughs> nobody wants worms. Uh, so this has got a lot of stuff in here. And it, I like the one thing I do like about this particular book is it uses all of the pumpkins. So you're not just tossing all of everything. You use the whole thing to make recipes, yes. cute decorations, and you get to learn some crafts too. So this is Oh My Gourd. <laughs> This is by Jack Hallow. My next book is Rebel Folklore, Empowering Tales of Spirits, Witches, and Other Misfits, from Anansi to Baba Yaga. It comes out September 19 by Icy Sedgwick. It's illustrated by Melissa Jerram, or Jerram. There's 50 of the darkest and most complicated folktale characters from around the world. Folktales used to be humble stories passed down generations by those on the fringes of society, women, peasants, outcast groups. These ancient stories are filled with strange characters, complicated figures who hold a mirror to the world that dreamt them up. 
from outspoken women cast as witches to anti-authority figures denounced as criminals, which is kind of going on in Iran right now. Mm -hmm. Flawed heroes to relatable villains, rebel folklore celebrates 50 of these misfits and what they mean for us today. We're going to meet a Romanian forest witch who terrorizes trespassers to protect the environment. The Churel, or Churel, who stalks unfaithful men on her backwards feet. Ah! Oh. We're even going to meet Robin Hood, everyone's favorite lawless activist. We're going to learn a lot from the rebels of days gone by. We'll learn how to speak out, embrace our flaws, and be unashamedly ourselves, even if that means being a cannibalistic swamp witch. <laughs> the publisher is DK Books, a very, very esteemed British publisher. That's Rebel Folklore by Icy Sedgwick. Oh, man. That's a dream. A uh cannibalistic swamp witch oh my god <laughs> you could do it you could be that i could oh i'll give you my mushroom books <laughs> you're so generous <laughs> so supportive of my dreams uh, all right so uh my next book is one i think you're you will love specifically this is spirits seers and and seances victorian spiritualism magic oh. and the supernatural yes this is by Steele Alexandra Doris, and this came out September 8th. So this is spiritualism in the age of Sherlock Holmes and Edgar Allan Poe. Ooh, so yeah. the pinnacle. A woman wearing a black veil convenes a seance. A magician puts a volunteer into a trance. A fortune teller leans over a crystal ball. Everyone knows what a Victorian mysticism looks like because our modern imagery, language, and practice of magic borrows heavily from the Victorians. Mm -hmm. But we have little understanding of its spiritual, cultural, and historical foundations. What made the Victorians turn to mediumship, hypnotism, and fortune-telling? What were they afraid of? What were they seeking? This book explores the history of automatic writing, cartomancy, clairvoyance, and a lot more. It reveals how Victorian belief in ghosts, fairies, and natural spirits shaped our celebrations of Halloween and Christmas. With historic examples and hands-on exercises, you will discover how spiritualism in the time of Jack the Ripper, Jane Eyre, A Christmas Carol, and Dracula left such a profound impact on both the past and present. This sounds very cool. Oh, I'm so intrigued. Yeah. So this is Spirits, Seers, and Seances, Victorian Spiritualism, Magic, and the Supernatural by Steele Alexandra Doris. My next book I'm super excited about, Disney, Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, Paper Models. It's a crafty book. I'm not very good at making paper models, but I love playing with glue. I don't sniff it, by the way. I'm just him. <laughs> The publisher is Thunder Bay Press. The author is Ari Kaplan. And you get 29 scary paper models and a book to go along with it. You're going to build a magnificent diorama of Halloween Town and other locations from the iconic film. It's a two-in-one kit, a 56-page model book with punch-out pieces. Oh, thank you, no scissors. And step-by-step -step instructions to make 29 paper models, including the Spiral Hill. Aww. The Mayor's Car, Jack's House, Oogie Boogie's Lair, and more. You also get a collection of punch-out trading cards with fascinating film facts and a 32-page keepsake book featuring iconic frames from the movie and detailed information about it. I am beyond excited for this. What a great Christmas gift this would be for the goth in your life. It's currently 25 bucks, not bad, for all that you're getting. It just looks like a fantastic gift book. And I'm peeking at the dioramas and they actually look really easy to make. Thank God, because I am not great. And I love that they're punch out. And I see Oogie Boogie's little spiral wheel of fortune type of th uh, roulette oh, wheel. Excuse me. Cute. This is Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas Paper Models by Ari Kaplan. Oh, that's cute. I like that. I also have a Nightmare Before Christmas novel. This is my last novel, too. This novel? Is Tim Oh, so did I say novel? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I was hoping you days. did. I'm like, I want to read a nightmare novel. Yay. <laughs> a nightmare novel would be great. 
Uh, so this is Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas visual companion. It's commemorating 30 years of Nightmare Before Christmas. I bet we have readers that didn't get to see it in the theater when it came out because they were not born yet. It's true. It was so good on the big screen, you guys. If it ever comes to your town on the big screen, definitely go for it. I need to do that myself, I think. Even though I was born by then. <laughs> I was born. <laughs> you were like two. I know. Four. This, uh, oh, I was so little. Uh, so this is published by Disney Editions. And this is another great gift. So actually both of those books that we just talked about, both of these ones, uh, would be great for anybody in your life that loves Nightmare Before Christmas. Because this is a kind of a top coffee table book. It's and expensive. It, <laughs> it is. Yeah. This one would be for your special, Ooh. awesome loved ones. The best ones. So this one has uh, new interviews with the filmmakers and rare images from the Disney and Burton art collections. This was basically like this movie was crafted as a piece of art. It's a visual masterpiece, and it blended together the genius of Tim Burton's simple story and endearing characters with Danny Elfman's eclectic music, Henry Selleck's stop-motion brilliance, and we also have Caroline Thompson's heartfelt script, and the painstaking efforts of hundreds of artists, animators, and technicians, all wrapped in a world that only Burton could conjure up. Paired with stunning and never-before-released art and photography, this book transports readers into a one-of-a-kind retrospective journey detailing how this movie was thoughtfully crafted and all the ways in which, fan, which the fan community worldwide has embraced the film ever since. I like this because we're now, I feel like, transitioning into a time where those jobs like Danny Elfman, Caroline Thompson, Henry Selleck, all of them and all of that work that those artists did are being replaced right now. <laughs> so, and it is a masterpiece. It's really beautiful. The fact that, you know, we as humans were able to craft this piece. So check this one out. If you do have a Nightmare Before Christmas loved one for a Christmas gift or for yourself, this is Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas Visual Companion by David A. Bossert. That wraps up our dark nonfiction spooky reads coming out in September 2023. You can find us over at Dark Side of the Library on Instagram, and Facebook, and occasionally YouTube. We have an Amazon storefront and do Amazon live streams on tarot decks, horror books, goth stuff, and of course, Halloween. You can find us at amazon.com slash live slash dark side of the library. Be sure to drop us a comment if you see us live streaming, but please be nice. We don't need any hecklers. Not in the spooky season. Mm -mm. Thanks so much for listening. You can catch our podcasts on Wicked Wednesdays, Freaky Fridays, and occasionally Malevolent Mondays. Katie does lots of mini-sodes after she reads awesome dark books. And we'll see you in the next podcast. <laughs>